How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So another question I've been getting asked lately is how do you do weather effects? So I've got my little scene set up here and what we're going to do is focus on a couple of your two main weather effects which would be rain and snow. And fortunately Minimator has a couple of presets that we can use to accomplish this really easily. So first one we're going to do is rain. We're going to go to our crafting table and we're going to spawn some particles and we're going to scroll down to our presets here and find rain and we're going to create this and then you automatically get this nice little system here we're going to go to our creator and we're going to reposition it let's zero it out because my scene is set up to be at zero and as you can see here it basically just kind of plops on the ground and uh, i guess you could probably use this uh, in conjunction with uh, another particle system to have little splashes on the ground if you wanted to. But for now, we're just going to focus on the basic uh, rain thing, how you would do it. So basically, this uh, particle is set up to have this whole thing here. It's like it's uh, 10,000 per minute. It's got uh, its own size. You can obviously resize it and make it bigger. For our scene, let's just go crazy and just bump it up to 750, have a bigger area to work with here. And um, let's see, it's got the uh, bounding box set to ground and the, the Z is set to four, which brings it up just a little bit above uh, the ground. I don't really know, uh, depending on how you're doing this, if that really matters that much, but we're just gonna leave it as is and we can go into our settings here and adjust more things. But for now, uh, what I wanted to show you is that if you take this and lift it up, then you'll notice that it actually starts to fall. Um, unfortunately, once you get so high, the raindrops kind of stop uh, going or whatever you want to call it. So for this, let's just say I want it to be pretty high. I want to have this kind of come up. Let's just say we want it to be at the 180 on our Z. And then you can see here that it doesn't like on the, uh, the camera view, you can't even see the rain. So uh, if you wanted to do this, what you would need to do is go into your uh, particle editor and select the, uh, the rain particle. And you want to go to where it says when animation is finished. So this is what it says, destroy particles when animation is finished. You could turn that off and then they would just go and drop as you can see, but they kind of stick around. You could turn it to, uh, they'll destroy after a certain amount of time. So let's, that's two by default, but if we want them to go away quicker, we can put it on one second, uh, possibly even, uh, let's see, can we do decimals? No, all right. So you could do one second, uh, possibly, yeah, you can do decimals, but you have to drag it. So do something like that. But I think what I found, what I liked better is have it do it while the animation or when the animation is finished and you go down to the animation speed here and you can slow it down and then it'll stop the uh the whole thing from happening so let's just make it about two frames per second and what that does is it makes the animation slower so that the particles don't destroy until after they've reached a certain point and you can play with this to get it however you need it to be based on how high you set your particles to be uh three seems pretty good but it's a, a little bit too too much so four is not enough so maybe if we do about three let's say 3.4 maybe 3.6 I don't really mind them hitting the ground so much. I just don't want them to stick around. Let's go ahead and clear our particles so we can start over and see. And then let's get a pretty decent rain animation here. So that's pretty much what you would do with your rain. Uh, once again, if you wanted to do another one, I don't think I would necessarily want to do this myself. But for instance, if you wanted to do another... Uh, thing like that and have it kind of pitter patter on the ground because when you have it that low it kind of looks like splashes so you can sort of do it that and then have one falling and one sitting here on the ground and it will create that kind of pitter patter on the pavement sort of look if that's what you're going for i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that though there we go that's pretty much uh our particle system set up you can do other things as well actually like say you want it to be a little bit more stormy so we're going to go into our particles we're going to go down to rain 
and you can come down here to the speed settings. So what you'll want to do is you can go down here to, you can pretty much use any of these, but I think probably the add is the, uh, the better one to go with. Um, but you can take this and when you adjust it, let's say we're going to adjust our Y. If we do like this, and then you'll notice that the rain is starting to, to go down at an angle. So, you know, we can make this about negative seven or something like that. It'll blow this way. We can uh, make it positive and it'll blow the other way. And same for your X position as well. Oh, I accidentally stopped the wrong one. Let's do uh, 7.5 on our Z. Remember that the Z has to be in place like that because that's what's making the particle go down. And we can increase that number or actually decrease that number and it'll come down even faster. So let's just say we want to have a kind of a strong storm. Let's go negative 40. And how about negative eight on that? So then you get this, or actually we probably need that to be stronger since it's coming down at a faster rate. So let's do negative 30. So then you get this nice harsh uh, blowing here. Uh, you could probably, this is, there's a lot of particles here coming, but uh, we can possibly up this number and then create even more rain. It may depend on your rig, how much you can handle here. See, it's hitting my uh, frame rate just a bit with this much. In any case, uh, you can do that. Let's go ahead and bump that back up. And uh, just as a couple of side notes here, how you would want to do a stormy scene like this. So you got your rain set up, you're good to go. And you want to make it look a little more stormy. So we're going to go to the background and we're going to adjust our clouds. Where are the clouds? Here we go. All right, so we want to adjust the clouds. First of all, you may want the clouds to be a little, little bit more gloomy. So we're gonna do like this. We're gonna have them be a little gray. Uh, usually when it rains, the clouds are a little lower. So we're gonna bring our clouds down. Uh, how, how far we want them to be. That's pretty good. Let's try about 400 just for the hell of it. And uh, let's take the cloud height up, you know, a little bit thicker. Um, you know, rain clouds got all that nice goodness in them make it about 100 and you can decrease the block size to make the clouds a little bit uh, more compact like that it's kind of a weird effect uh, you know you can play with that and see what you want you can make them more spread out so that the clouds themselves are, are actually bigger whatever you want I'm just gonna leave it on default and you can of course slow them down if I wanted to or speed them up so we'll do like that uh, let's make it about let's see if we can do 0.2 so you can Whoops. All right, there we go. So you can make it uh, zero if you just want to kind of have the clouds settling in and not moving, things like that. Anyway, so you got your clouds set up and let's say you want to do a little bit of a uh, little, little bit of thunder. There we go, I couldn't get the words. Also, hang on, uh, we want to maybe bring the time down a bit, kind of have it be a little a little bit darker in our scene, you know, something like this. Overhanging the clouds. Things are a little dark and creepy. And what we're going to do, um, if you wanted to, you could probably use like a custom item texture or whatever and create a bolt of lightning. But for now, we're just going to see if we can simulate it with a light. You know, you have light, you would add some thunder sound effects in your scene, you know, in, in the editing portion. So let's just say that, you know, we have a bolt of lightning striking off in this direction. So we're going to take this light here. Let's see if we can turn on our rendering so we can see what's going on. Uh, you can probably pretty much just do white. Sometimes the lightning kind of appears slightly blue. So I might do that. And let's see, I'm going to turn. Let's put the fade sides. This, this depends on where the light is located. But for now, for the way we've got this set up, let's do about 20%. And we're going to bring our range down to, to zero, maybe. Let's see if that works. All right, another thing I may want to do here real quick is bring the light up. Because you can see the shadows are a little bit wonky. So let's move our, uh, let's move our light until we get the exact look we want. Maybe something like that. We'll, we'll try it. We'll see what that does. So it goes from zero and then suddenly up. And I maybe want it to be a little bit quicker. And then let's say it kind of flashes a bit, so we'll go down to uh, maybe a hundred, and then 
back up 750 and then it comes back down to zero again and uh let's just say we've got this skeleton here in our scene and let's just say at uh the point where the lightning strikes we want our our skeleton to become visible this is this is gonna be one of them creepy things that happens uh let's actually bring him up so we can see him a little better whoa that's not it it probably doesn't look too good but i just figured i'd throw it in for a little flare so if we watch our our scene here we got all this rain coming down torrential downpour once again you may want to adjust the numbers and stuff uh, i might have it going a little too fast and whatnot but this is just to give you guys an idea so it's raining and then boom look at that Pew. all right <laughs> Something like that. that. That looks pretty bad, but you get the idea. You can do crazy things, and imagine if there's a sound effect there and you timed it up properly. You could have some uh, lightning depictions. It might look a little better if you had like a house or something, and it would cast a shadow from the window into the house and things like that as the lightning strikes. But that's just a very rough, like basic way, like an idea for you guys, how you could accomplish that. Uh, so now... That's, that's rain, so let's go ahead and get rid of this, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the snow. So now we're going to go into a particle spawner, and we're going to pick snow, and then the snow is a little bit different than the, uh, the rain with the way it works. So we're going to go into our particle editor, and as you can see here, the snow is only... Uh, the 1000 per minute. Let's go ahead and fix our stuff here. Um, so there's less particles with snow, which makes it a little bit easier for us to work with. And once again, we're gonna have to bring it up. So once again, we have the snow dropping down here and that's pretty much it. And the same things for, you know, how I did the rain would apply here as well. Um, but one thing with snow is that it does accumulate on the ground, right? So you may want to kind of simulate that in your animation. So we're going to go over here to our blocks. We're going to go to this, and I've got them sorted by like in a descending order. And I'm going to go down to the S's and find snow. Here we go. You got snow layer, and then you just have like a block of snow. Uh, I'm going to go with snow layer and just have it be... Like you can use this bar here to, to change it to different ones. We're just going to use the default one on zero. So we got our snow layer. And let's go ahead and zero that out. And this is just going to be an example here. I don't know, uh, you know, how you might want to do this for yourself to make it look a little better. But we're just going to do it real quick here. So we're going to go to our snow layer. We're going to click on the repeat and we're going to bring it up. Now, obviously, you can get really detailed with this and intricate and whatnot um, and get little bits of it like individual ones and put them on top of the trees and have that going and whatnot as well but I'm just gonna give you guys the basic idea on the ground here uh, so let's go ahead and expand this out and do like this so what you can do with this to, to show it like accumulating and getting thicker if you wanted to is you're gonna go to the scale and we're gonna untick scale in all directions so that we can only alter the uh, direction that we want to and we're gonna alter the Z. We're gonna bring it way down, all the way to zero. And let's just say for your scene, you already have it here. If you wanted to animate it kind of like showing up, it looks a little bit wonky uh, in my opinion, but you could do that, you know? You can have it kind of just pop up. Maybe uh, do it over a longer period of time, might look a little bit better. But as the snow falls, it kind of just shows up. Anyway, uh, basically what I would do though is, let's go ahead and zero this back out let's just say the snow is already there and you don't want to do that okay so uh you know your snow layer you probably don't want it to get too thick just a little bit but what you can do is then on this second keyframe here we're gonna zero it out to uh one which makes it the uh typical minecraft ugh, snow layer thick as you can see here a couple of uh pixels worth basically and then as your snow falls you can see that it kind of accumulates and obviously <laughs> that's rather quick you might want it to go over a longer period of time but you can do that and your snow is actively accumulating and overtaking the environment there 
And it looks pretty cool. It's a nice little effect you could use. Uh, obviously, you may not want it doing it in real time, but just over the course of your scenes and your animation, you could have it getting slightly thicker and thicker and coming up on the character's legs and things like that, and it would look real cool. All right, guys, so for one final tip I wanted to mention to you guys is let's say you wanted to have a nice storm happening and you want it to be on the water. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are aware of the way that Minimator uses water, but they've incorporated this nice wave effect. First thing you want to make sure that you do, and I do believe this is enabled by default, but you want to go into your settings, go to graphics, and make sure wave animation is ticked. Uh, I haven't played with this a whole lot, so I don't know exactly how important that is, but I would just make sure it's there if you're having any problems. So we've got this, uh, this water here. I'm actually going to expand it a bit more. Let's do about 25 and 25. So let's just say you have an ocean. Now the reason I'm spawning in a water block here instead of using the ground water, uh, and like I could change the, the ground block here to water. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't know if the ground water responds the same. I think the block actually has the animation whereas the, the ground version does not. So that's if you're having any problems with it, that's what you'll want to do. You want to use the block and not that. So what you could do, let's actually go ahead and bring in our particle again. We've got our rain and we're just going to bring it up and let's just say it's storming. It's storming out on the ocean. All right. Uh, and it doesn't really look that stormy here, right? Because it's just water and it's just rain. But what we can do, since we have the wave animation applied to our water, we can up the wind speed, which normally if you had a tree, if I left the trees on here, you would have seen, it makes the wind blow all crazy and the, and the tree blocks will go nuts and the grass and things like that. But with water, it gives us this awesome like three-dimensional wave effect and we can get, you know, a nice stormy ocean kind of scene. We can up the strength and it makes it all the more turbulent you know a huge ordeal going on here with our our ocean it's going crazy and you could animate a boat on top of it and have it kind of getting tossed around a bit and whatnot things like that pretty cool little nifty feature there and uh you could create a nice water storm scene so that's how you would kind of do the weather in a situation like this I just thought that was a really cool feature and a nice little bonus tip to how to accomplish weather effects in Minimator. But I think that's going to do it. So I hope that was helpful, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope I made sense. If you did, if you found it helpful, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets and whatnot. And I will see you guys in the next video.